Hello and welcome to Into the Woods with Holly Wharton. This podcast has evolved over the five plus years since it first launched. From now on, I'm going to be talking about deepening your connection with yourself, taking inspired action, and really trusting yourself and your intuition. And also mindset, of course, but mindset of all kinds, not just business mindset. I think. Things are changing for me, as you may have noticed if you've been following me online or listening to this podcast, so anything goes here. I hope you stay along for the ride. Thank you so much for joining us today, and now let's get into this week's episode. Hello and welcome to the Into the Woods podcast, episode 327. This is your host, Holly Wharton, and I'm back with another solo episode. Today, I'm going to talk about how to do your year-end review. And I know that this may be weird timing for a lot of you because it's the end of October and we still have two months left in the Gregorian calendar. However, we are approaching Samhain. And this is a time of the year when I find it really natural to start doing my year-end review because I think part of my system feels like this is the new year. So... Samhain, uh, which I have talked about in previous episodes, is kind of the pagan new year. I don't know if everyone sees it that way, but it's if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, as I am, and probably most of the people listening to this, Samhain, which is technically the 1st of November, but really more like the period from the 31st of October to the 2nd of November, so those kind of three days. Or in the Southern Hemisphere, it's the 30th of April to the 2nd of May. This is when the veil is lifted between the worlds and we have access to the other world. We might be able to perceive things that we don't at other times of the year. If you've read my tree book, you know that I had a lot of really deep experiences with the trees during this time last year. And I just felt really, really connected to everything. So when we kind of return to our everyday lives after Samhain is over, we're basically in a new cycle of our lives or kind of a new year. So I really feel like this is kind of the end of the old year, the beginning of a new year, and I really feel called to do my own personal annual review around this time of the year. And I did the same thing last year. I think it was episode 275 that I talked about Samhain, and I talked about how I do my year-end review. And I was debating about topics for this, this episode, and there were a lot of things that I had in mind, but really this has kind of been the the undercurrent of my thoughts for the last week or so. So I thought that, you know, as usual, what's timely for me may be timely for you. So this is what I'm going to be talking about. So if you're feeling ready to do your own annual review now and get ready for the new year, then this timing of this episode will be perfect for you. If you are not feeling ready to do this work, then maybe listen to it now and revisit the show notes or the episode again in December or whenever it's right for you. So I think it's really important to do an annual review because it helps me stay on top of my life. It helps me stay on top of my goals and my plans and my path and my achievements. And it helps me to create the life that I want to create. Now, I don't usually achieve 100% of my goals. Actually, as I'm saying that, I don't think I ever have achieved 100% of them. And oftentimes that's because other things have been more important or I just haven't quite figured out what I need to do to achieve them. So I need to kind of tweak them for the next year. But I do feel generally really satisfied with what I get done each year. And I think that it can really, really help if you're feeling kind of disappointed with yourself, which I can be hard on myself sometimes. So if you are feeling disappointed in yourself for whatever reason, feeling like you haven't achieved what you wanted to achieve, the year-end review is really important because it reminds you of what you did do. Like maybe you didn't achieve everything you set out to. Maybe you did other things instead. I had just just written an email because I've just gotten back on track with my Druidry program, my Ovate grade. And I'd started this in the beginning of the year and think March sent in my first update to my mentor, and then stopped. I just stopped doing the work because I was really, really occupied with other things and really occupied with my plant spirit healing apprenticeship 
And I really kind of felt bad about myself for what I thought was neglecting the OBOD coursework. And while I didn't do the coursework itself, and I've just kind of picked it up again in the last couple of weeks, one thing that my mentor said was, I may not have been doing the coursework, but I was doing ovate grade work. The type of healing that I've been doing in my plant spirit healing apprenticeship is very much aligned with that. My being outdoors, my tree book, all of that was really aligned with the kind of work that you do and the kind of experiences you have in the ovate grade. So having that perspective was really important to me because it made me realize I wasn't doing the actual coursework, but I was doing the practical work, even though I didn't realize it. So let that be an example for you and try to think about what other things you might have done this year that has maybe helped you to achieve your goals or have the experience you want to have in your life, even though it wasn't exactly what you thought you were going to do when you planned your year. So how do you do your year-end review? So what I do, since I do a lot of journaling, the first thing I do is I usually go through my old journals. And one of the first things that I noticed this year was I usually go through, I use A4 size journals, which is roughly letter size if you're in the States. So it's a big journal. I don't like the smaller ones. So I usually go through two, three of those in a year, about one journal every four months or so. But this year, I've only gone through two journals. And that's made me realize I haven't spent as much time writing in them. Now, my first thought was, oh, that's disappointing. But really, it's partly because I've been using other journals as well. I have a special journal for my Ovate Grade course, um, which we were really encouraged to have something separate for our road work. And so I've been writing in there a little bit. And I also have a separate journal for my Plant Spirit Healing Apprenticeship. And while I usually have just one journal for everything I do, this year I've branched out into a couple of different journals. Partly because I was asked to for the OBOD course and the situation of the Plant Spirit Healing, it just made sense to have a separate notebook with all of the notes from the program and notes from my journeys and my experiences. So that possibly contributed to the fact that I've only had two regular journals rather than three. So the first thing I do is I just kind of go through, I just flip through the journal, read through stuff. I've got it next to me as I'm recording this, looking at, you know, my year end review last year, what kinds of things in my life are not benefiting me, things I wanted to let go of. I look at the year end review that I did, and I did it a bit later last year. I can see from my notes here, it was on the 27th of November when I actually did the formal year-end review, but I remember starting to work on this even earlier um, because I really feel that around this time of year. So I did a whole series of questions and answers and liked that. I think it really helped to give me an idea of what my year had been like. So let me give you an idea of some kinds of questions that you can ask yourself. And if you go online and you search for how can I complete a year in personal review? How do I review my year? You'll find like top 50 questions to review your year. And some of those may be relevant to you and some of them may not. Uh, so let's keep it simple for this. Start out by reviewing your old, old journals. If you keep journals, just go through your last journal entries from the last year and see what you've put in there, what you wrote in there, what happened during the year. My memory is quite honestly pretty bad. So I'm often really surprised at some of the things that I find in my journals. And I think, oh, wow, I totally forgot that happened. Or I totally forgot I was thinking about that. So go through those and see what you find that might be a surprise. Look through, and I like to kind of tick off with a check mark things that I've achieved, things that I wanted to do and I actually did. Go through those and just kind of relive your year through your journals. And if you're not a journaling kind of person, then, you know, you won't, you'll be able to skip this step. Another thing that I do every year before the end of the year is I pull 12 oracle cards to one for each month of the year. And those, and then I also pull a 13th card, which is kind of the overarching theme for the year. And then I write that all down in my journal. This is something I did last year around this time. 
I did it according to my notes from the on the 26th of October. So I pulled one oracle card for each month, wrote down the month, wrote down the card, a little bit of a description of the card, and then, as I said, a 13th card, which was the overarching theme. So I go through that, and I kind of look, and I usually check this out throughout the year, and I look each month, and I kind of see how the month coincided with the card, and it's usually really, really accurate. Um, which I have always found to be, I work with Oracle cards and I don't know why it still (laughs) surprises me when this stuff is so accurate, but I find it really, really useful. So I go through my notes from that and I see how my actual year coincided with the cards. And as I said, usually coincides quite well. So the overarching theme for 2019 from my cards was Bloodstone. And I used this Oracle card deck that's I'll put it in the show notes. It's crystal cards. So it has different crystals and their kind of healing meaning. So Bloodstone is all about detoxification and chaos, transformation, perseverance, locked doors open, obstacles are swept away. A farewell is called for, mourn and let go, let go of the past, look closely at ancestral line, recognize toxic patterns, perseverance uh, was kind of the overarching theme. Yeah, I feel like this year has been a lot of, I wouldn't say chaos, but definitely detoxification in terms of just letting go of stuff that no longer serves me. I've done a lot of deep work in the plant spirit healing apprenticeship in terms of rewriting soul contracts, working with the ancestral line for the first time ever, doing a lot of that kind of healing, letting go of blocks, obstacles. I have a very dear friend is doing kind of a distant and I hope to be able to talk about this more in the future because I really hope she's going to open this up and offer it publicly to people. But a really deep kind of house cleaning energetically, but also it's kind of intuitive. She calls in her guides. She's working with the energies, clearing blocks. It's, I, she's still doing it this week. We're in the middle of it. And I think that's also probably why I'm feeling like the need to review my year and and let go of the stuff that no longer serves me because a lot of stuff is being cleaned out during this process. So more about that in the future, hopefully. But it's been very much a year of kind of detoxing and really getting clear on what I want to let go of and letting go of that stuff and doing that at a very deep level, as I said, with the soul contracts and and ancestral line and, and that kind of healing. So I go through the 12 cards and then I look at my list of goals for the year. And I go through those. So like things like publishing my tree book. I did that in April. Getting my brown black belt. I did that in the summer. Go through all those goals and see what I've achieved, what I haven't achieved. And the goals that I didn't achieve, why didn't I achieve them? Are they still interesting to me? Are they still important to me? Are they still goals that I want to focus on? If so, pass them onto my list for next year. If not, you know, give myself permission to let go of them. And then celebrate the goals that you have achieved if you haven't done that throughout the year and just as an excuse to celebrate them again. I think think celebrating our goals is really, really important. And I know that personally, I don't do enough of that. So celebrate your goals. And then look at your focus. What did you focus on in 2019? I'm looking at my journal and it says, focus for 2019, spending time on writing, which I did, Nature, kind of did. Obad, didn't do much of that. That's my druid training. Reading, read 32 books so far this year. More outdoors courses. I don't even know what that means. Oh, yes, taking more outdoors courses. (laughs) Uh, Right. So I didn't have time for that this year. Um, I did do my NNAS, and I will link to this in the show notes because I think it's such a great course, the NNAS uh, Gold Training. That's the National Navigation Award Scheme. And I will link to the guy that I do these courses with. He's up north in Yorkshire, and he's absolutely fantastic. So if you want to learn how to navigate, use a map, this is a really great way to do it. So I've done a few courses with this guy in the past. His name is Mark Reed. He's fantastic. And I just, his courses didn't fit into my schedule this year. There were so many more of them that I wanted to do, but there were conflicts with so many other things. So I only got to do one. And so I've made a note to do more of that in 2020. So what did you focus on? What did you not focus on as much as you wanted to? 
And make note of that for next year. So as I've said, more outdoors courses in 2020. Well, coincidentally, I've already signed up for two outdoors courses with the same woodcraft school that I took my plant spirit, uh, no, not plant spirit, <laughs> it was a very practical horse, plant identification for wild food and foraging course. And I'll link to them also in the show notes. It's this really great school in West Sussex where they've got this place in the woods and you camp, you don't have to camp, but you can camp. And then you just learn plant stuff and nature stuff. So I'm doing their ethnobotany course, which I think is a, an eight or nine month course next year. And also their wildlife identification and tracking, which I'm super excited about. So I've already signed up for things for next year. And then I also need to look at Mark Reed's calendar and sign up for some of his stuff for next year, because I really, really like doing his programs. And also it's a good excuse to go up to New Yorkshire, because I don't otherwise make it up that far. So what did you focus on? And what would you like to focus on more? What did you achieve? So this is kind of going back to your goals. What did you achieve? What did you not achieve? Is it still important to you? And if so, make a note for next year. What have you learned this year? Were there any new skills that you studied or learned? Was there something that you wanted to learn, but you weren't able to because you didn't have time? And do you still want to learn it for next year? So, you know, I didn't focus on my OBOD coursework this year. But I did learn a lot through my Plant Spirit Healing Apprenticeship, which I will link to in the show notes because Sunit finally has her new website up and you can learn all about the apprenticeship. She's got two different versions of it for next year. It's really, really good. And if you are in the southeast of England and are interested in this kind of work, I highly recommend it. So what have you learned? Is there something that you want to kind of dig deeper into for next year? Write that down. And were there any overarching themes to the year? So like I said, in my card, the overarching theme was detoxification, perseverance. And I feel like those were themes. I did a lot of reading this year. I'm really, really happy with all the books that I read. So I guess I achieved and surpassed my reading goals. Yeah, but look at, look at the overarching themes for the year and see what kinds of things came up for you. I became aware of this pattern that I've had in terms of a certain type of person that kind of come across in my life at certain points. And I've realized that one of the people that's currently in my life is fits that profile. And I'm really wanting to let go of that relationship, but can't just yet. So it's been really eye-opening to me to kind of see that I'm still in that cycle. So that's been really, really useful. So any overarching themes to the year. And next, what do you want to let go of? What do you want to let go of as you move into the new year? Any clients, any type of work, any people, any feelings? And probably I should have asked you this question before the last one, but how do you feel about the year? Like, how do you feel about 2019? Is that a satisfying year? Do you feel good about yourself? Do you feel good about all the things you've done? For me, I feel like I did a lot of deep healing this year. I thought I was doing deep work with the mindset work that I was doing, but I feel like I've taken my own personal healing and work with others to a much deeper level that I didn't really realize was there. So that was a really pleasant surprise, and I'm really, really satisfied with the inner work that I'm doing, and also the inner work that I've been kind of doing for other people, because I've been offering through my newsletter uh, every once in a while when I needed guinea pigs for my practice, um, plant spirit healing journeys, and I might be offering those next year. I'm not quite sure. We'll see, but we've learned some really, really good stuff that I think I think I might be sending out some very kind of targeted offers for very specific healings. So if you're on my newsletter, you will hear about it there. If not, I probably won't make it available anywhere else except for Patreon. So moving in, once you feel like you've really kind of evaluated your year, you've done your review, and really with some of these questions, we've already started looking forward to the future and to next year. So Think about 2020. Think about your year. Do you have a word of the year? Do you have a theme? What's the overarching theme that you want to experience in the new year? I can't believe we're in 2020. What do you want to be? Who do you want to be in 2020? What do you want to do? What do you want to have? What do you want to experience? What do you want to learn? 
What are your goals for the year? What do you want to focus on? And again, look at all of your goals and things that you didn't achieve last year and that you still want to achieve this year and add those to your list. And the things that you wanted to focus on last year but didn't manage to do so, add those to the list if you still want to focus on them. What do you want to call in? So we talked about letting go of things at the end of you know the old year. Obviously, you need to take action to let go of those things. But every time we let go of things or we declutter it, it makes space to call in new things. And I think that's one of the most exciting things about decluttering and doing that kind of work. You've got that kind of vacuum, that space to call in new stuff. So what do you want to call in for 2020? And I think perhaps most importantly, how do you want to feel? How do you want to feel in the new year? And I think for me that how do I want to feel is the most important thing. And perhaps for you as well, because ultimately, why do we choose the experiences that we choose in our lives? Why do we seek out these experiences? Why do we set these goals? It's because we want to feel a certain way. And thanks to a session I had earlier this year with Fabeku, I put words to the feeling that I strive for, which is expansive joy. That is the feeling that I feel when I'm out on a long distance trail. That is the feeling that I felt when I was at that house in Avebury that I really, really wanted last year. It just gave me that feeling of expansive joy. It's a feeling that I crave. It's a feeling that I feel when I'm backpacking and camping, when I'm out in nature. It's So what is that feeling that you crave in your life? What is that feeling that you are doing all of these things because you want to experience? What activities or what things will help bring more of that feeling to your life? I think all this stuff is really, really useful to, to identify. I was just reading a blog post, kind of skimming through it this morning. Um, I think it was a Gretchen Rubin one, and I will try to find it and link to it in the show notes. It was, it was like a quiz to figure out if you're a drifter. Are you drifting through life? And God, I used to be like that. You know, for the first couple, three decades of my life at least, maybe 30, first 35 years, I was really just drifting through life. You know, I had no concept of reality creation. I had no concept of setting goals. I had no concept, I mean, outside of a business setting. I had no concept of identifying what I wanted to experience in life and then doing the things I needed to do to achieve those things and to have that experience. So I think that's why so many of these podcast episodes are about this because I was a drifter for probably 35 years. And now for the last 11 years, I have been very conscious, increasingly conscious of how I want to live my life and taking the actions I need to take to have those experiences. So I think in summary, (laughs) the reason why it's so important to do a year-end review is precisely so you can create the experience that you want to have. Now, I don't know. Like I said, I don't achieve 100% of my goals. I would be lying if I said that I did. But step by step, year by year, my life is becoming more and more aligned with the overarching vision that I have for myself and that I have for my life and, and for how I want to live and what I want to do and how I want to feel. And that's only been possible because I have invested the time in getting clear on that vision. And I think the more that we can do to know what we want, and I think that's the thing, most people don't know what the heck they want. So The more work we can do to at least get clear on what we want, that's the first step. And then the next step is taking practical action to achieve it. And again, you might not achieve 100% of your goals every year. That's fine. You're still taking action towards the vision, towards the goals that you want. Do you want to have? You want to achieve? I was just thinking the other day of the old Leonie Dawson planners. Again, I'll link to those in the show notes if you don't know what they are. I used to get those every single year and she has this section in them where you write down a hundred things that you want to do in the year. And to me, it wasn't just stuff that I wanted to do. It was stuff that I wanted to, it was kind of mini goals for me. That's how I used it. And I used to get so upset with myself because I'd kind of tick them off at the end of the year and, you know, I usually didn't achieve the majority of them and I'd feel kind of bad. And unfortunately, I haven't kept any of those journals. I threw them all away. And I'm really sad about that because I'm now realizing that in my current life today, I'm experiencing a lot of the things 
that I had written down in those hundred things lists a handful of years ago. Sometimes it takes longer than a few months to achieve our goals. Sometimes other stuff needs to come into place first. And it's like, when you look back in time, you can kind of see, oh, I had to do this before I could do that, before I could get this, before I could achieve that. And it makes sense. But I think that's why it's important to, again, get a really clear vision of what we want to have, to experience, to feel. Even if we don't achieve 100% of our goals every year, we're still taking action towards our vision. And again, I've been talking a lot about our year end review and setting our goals. Obviously, you need to take practical action to achieve those goals. Obviously, you need to do the work. For me, it wasn't enough to just sign up to my plant spirit healing apprenticeship. I actually had to go to all the weekends and do all the homework. Obviously, you have to take the action. But getting that vision is so, so important. If you don't know where you're going, you're just going to be drifting. You're going to be wandering around. And and I think so many people do that. And it's not a great way to live your life because it often leads to making the wrong decisions and living a life that you don't want to live. And I have done that before and it's not great. It's a lot nicer to know what you want and take the action to experience that. So that's all for today. Next week, I will be back with another solo episode. I'm starting to think of bringing, I don't know, other guests on to do the kind of thing that I do with uh, Joe and Joanna, not doing interviews, but having deeper conversations. And so I'm just kind of letting you know that I'm thinking about maybe doing a couple of those kinds of episodes every month. So it's not just me because I really do feel like some of my best episodes are often when I have someone else to kind of bounce ideas off of and we both speak to a topic because also that way you get a variety of perspectives on the topic at hand. So I'm probably going to be digging through old lists of my old podcast guests, people that I know that I had good rapport with and want to bring on again. I probably won't be opening up the show to getting people to pitch themselves to me because I really haven't had the best conversations with random people. So we'll see. We'll see where this is going. But as we're going into the new year, um, I, I am feeling kind of like switching things up on this podcast a little bit more. And again, it's probably going to be like I used to do when I was doing two solo episodes and then one with Joe and with Joanna. It'll probably be something like that, except I'll have additional people on instead of just Joe and Joanna. So that's all for now. And I hope you found this interesting and useful. If you have any questions about how to do your own year-end review, please get in touch. My email is holly at hollywharton.com, or you can find me online and get in touch there. So if you have any questions, if you have any comments, please let me know. And as always, thank you so much for listening. Remember to visit hollywharton.com forward slash 327 for the show notes on this episode. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening to Into the Woods with Holly Wharton. You can find more information about today's episode, including links for topics that were discussed at hollywharton.com. That's H-O-L-L-Y-W-O-R-T-O-N.com. If you'd like to connect with other listeners and get support on your journey, I would love for you to join my private community on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Holly Wharton. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash Holly Wharton. Thank you so much for listening, and I look forward to seeing you next week.